on my deathbed, the thing that's going to be most important to me is that I spent a, as much time as possible with the people I love. And then they can forget about me the moment I die. <laughs> oh, no. You can haunt them. Oh, I love a good haunt. I'm already so busy right now. I can't think about slating for the afterlife. <laughs> my excited. schedule. I'm excited <laughs> like, for it. Yeah, what are you going to do in the afterlife? Busy, busy haunting. I'm going to go here and there. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cleopatra. I'm Christy Bonna. And I'm Lynn Molly. And this is a podcast about two comedy queens digging up the funny from the first generation experience. Our guest today, she is an amazing comic from Toronto. She writes for a show called Children Ruin Everything. She also just got done with a sketch fest run. Please give a warm welcome to Miss Bita Judaki. Yay, yay, yay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I gotta say, that title of a TV show would never fly in America. You don't think so? People nope. get really upset about it from what I read online. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so funny to me. Yeah, me too. I think they do ruin everything. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a big, broad statement for sure that well, children ruin everything. <laughs> Um, in America, it would be children ruin most things. Uh, That's the edit. I actually have a huge fear of having kids because they're going to see all the dumb shit I've done online and lose respect for me. That's, that's not why if you're having kids. Mine is more like climate change based. Oh, yeah, that's number two. Because I don't think any, any any media will survive the climate oh, wars. shit. That's, I never thought of that. Well, then I support climate change. <laughs> you heard it on I... Cleopatra. <laughs> Look, we're very clear here in Cleopatra. We're pro asteroid that will hit the Earth. Yes. We we wholeheartedly support starting over. I mean, yes. you live in Toronto. You deserve some better weather. Thank Come you on. so much. It's been really warm this winter, and I'm happy. <laughs> okay. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm anti climate change for okay. the record. Good, thank you. Yes, keep this on record for my kids. The one noble thing I do. I also <laughs> see kids and future employers on e equal uh, footing yeah, here. Yeah, that's my. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Or people you're like dating. Have Have you ever had the the instance of them being like, "So I googled you." <gasps> It's terrible. It makes me want to die. <laughs> so I Googled you. I mean, I think it's pretty standard for people to Google people. They go on dates. But I think most people who aren't stand-up comedians don't have, like, very personal things just super readily available. Yeah. I had somebody ask me out after a show once Ooh. and had already had my, like, 10-minute spiel of, like, who I am, what I used to do, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And then all, he didn't even give me his name. And he was like, do you want to go for like a movie? And I was oh, like, wow. what's your name? You know so much about me. So weird. Do you know what's wild about that? I always bring up my boyfriend and Seth's to eliminate any weirdness yeah. after shows. And I have had multiple men ask me out after I do material oh, about wow. being in a decade plus long relationship. And then I'm like, did they not listen to me, but still ask me out? They're not listening to a word you're saying. I know, <laughs> but they're still into it. It's so To be wild. fair, a lot of comedians make up relationships for the joke fair. or tell old jokes or where they the were. Safety. Yeah, oh, for the safety. Yeah, for the safety. Yeah. That's I dark. made up a whole security guard fiance. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that people know that I have protection. You need a ring. Okay. We're working on it. We're working on mm -hmm. it. The delusion... Of Gloria Liz Mora, pro delusion, pro, uh, pro Delulu, pro, pro Delulu, climate change. pro asteroid, <laughs> pro climate change podcast, <laughs> and we're off, <laughs> to, we're off to the races. Yay. But let's uh, rewind from like pre climate change, the good years. <laughs> we'll say okay. it's like when the environment was better, but history was worse, uh -huh. right? Um, so we're gonna go back to maybe. Um, if you want to go as far back as your grandparents, or maybe we'll start with your parents, mm -hmm. but just kind of what's your history? What's your folklore? Where did it all begin? Mm, I'm Iranian, and my parents left Iran during the Iran-Iraq war. They kind of just like countryless for a few years, traveling around the Middle East. And then they somehow ended up in Italy, 
Ooh. <laughs> oh, upgrade. Yes. Or I don't know. Uh, who knows? <laughs> Pasta upgrade. Pasta. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, that's where I was born. You were born in Italy. I didn't know that. That's great. Yes. But it doesn't get me anything. It doesn't get me any citizenship because they're so xenophobic. Can I say that? Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's this podcast, this alternate this title was xenophobia. xenophobia. Oh, yeah. Shit. Damn. No. <laughs> xenophobia warrior princess. <laughs> oh my God. That needs to be something. <laughs> Sorry. I very much laughed far too hard at my own joke. No, but that I, was I will really say, good. I knew you were gonna say that intuitively and it was really beautiful when you did Wow, <laughs> she knows me you're so connected <laughs> we're telepathic we'll have a telepathic podcast where we just think at each other oh yeah i don't think it'll make for riveting audio but that's probably the future. let's do it right now think something oh say it go three two one say something <laughs> oh like mind meld the improv <laughs> exercise yeah yeah okay ready let's do mind it. meld Three, two, two one. one. Cotton. Cleopatra. Okay. Oh, <laughs> both starts with C. Okay. Now next one. Cleopatra and, and cotton. cotton. And then I really don't like where this okay. is going. I do. Ready? <laughs> Three, Three, two, two one. one. Egypt. History. Okay. And then the next one. Three, two, one. Pyramid. Pyramid. Yeah, done. we did it. My mouth. Oh, we're ready to done. I'm sorry you were in the middle zip, of that. Zip, zap, zap. <laughs> yes, now this let's is... get zip, zap, zap going. No, honestly, <laughs> I am so much more pro asteroid now than I was five minutes oh, ago. Shit. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. No, that was uh, that was our problem. I do love those games that do make you feel bummed, but it's like humiliating. It's humiliating to be into anything. So let's just lean in and. <laughs> And go back so. to Italy. Go back to Italy. Yes. I always want to go back to Italy, so let's go back. All right, let's, let's go back. Do it. Yeah. So, where in Italy were you born? I was born in a small town outside of Rome called Ladispoli. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think we only spent like one year there, and then we came to Canada. I don't. And again, I never want to make a comedian do history lessons. Uh-huh. But the Iraq Iran War was it just like? unlivable unsafe to be there it was my parents don't talk about it a lot and then (laughs) it's not a fun party conversation it's not weird it's not and then when they do it's like oh yeah so you know we had to run to the basement because they were bombing near us (laughs) it's like the the most heavy thing you've ever heard just like yeah you know whatever i think that's pretty common Something we talked about, we had um, a Bosnian comic on and her parents um, basically came from concentration camps. Mm -hmm. And she said she noticed a lot of um, like lingering effects Mm -hmm. on her parents. Do do you see that too? Um, I don't think so. They're not as bougie as I am. (laughs) (laughs) No, we can't wait to get into that. Do you know what my mom calls bougie things? She calls them fantasy. So if there's like a restaurant like Squirrel or something, which is a restaurant in LA that has like toast for like $17, Hell yeah. my mom would call it fantasy. <laughs> uh-huh. Or like, you know, Our Place, those pans that are like colorful on Instagram. Yes. Yes. And they have like the Easy Bake Oven for adults, fantasy. I want it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> So they moved straight from Italy to Canada? Yeah, yeah. We were in a very cold place called Saskatchewan. Ooh, heard of it. Ever heard of it? Yes. <laughs> we, I think we had to stay there for a year. And then there's a big Iranian community in North Vancouver where I grew up. My dad had a friend who was there. So we ended up there. And what was it like growing up? It was good. I really don't have any memories <laughs> of childhood. Where did but, they go? I don't know. They're just gone. <laughs> you know, not to be heavy, but that's generally a sign that it wasn't very good if you're losing huge chunks. Of- uh, I don't think that's right. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like it. Just rewind and play over the tape. Sounds like it was good to me. I like that. Uh, what was it like? I don't know. <laughs> No idea. There was a lot of Iranians around, so oh, that's, that's good. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Um, my parents weren't really concerned about us, like holding on to any of our culture. Mm. I don't know if you guys have the same <laughs> experience. I feel like it's a half-half for me. My dad's pretty much like. I denounce the Middle East, and my mom's like, I could have raised a good Syrian woman in mm, Syria. Mm. So it's a little, I don't know. And I've heard this from a lot of people that yeah. there's like oftentimes a split between 
mom and dad. So like we were, I'm guessing your parents weren't super religious. No, neither of them. Are yeah. they Muslim or? Maybe their families were, but neither of my parents, I don't ever remember them like praying or anything, reading the Quran or anything. We don't remember much from your childhood. So yeah, maybe, also... maybe they did. <laughs> the most unreliable narrator of yourself. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I trust everything you say. No, I um, lie. I'm a liar. <laughs> I, I do absolutely love how Canada, at least the major cities, feel so much more integrated racially than America does. I feel like I've talked to so many Canadian comics and they're like, we didn't grow up with racism. And I'm like, excuse me, what? Well, that's not true. <laughs> There's definitely racism, but I think it's more diversity, at least and less segregated, my in impression is, in yeah. the major cities. But the, the racism is also so passive aggressive. Oh, they just do it nicely. Yeah, mm. which I think is almost worse because then it does... Um, people can be like, oh, there's no racism in Canada, right. but there is. <laughs> right. No one talks about it. Yeah, we're approaching that, unfortunately, in, in this country of like, we're not a racist country. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And every, I think everyone is just like, when in doubt, gaslight everybody and <laughs> yes. keep, keep it moving. <laughs> when in doubt, gaslight everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, also, that's a great yeah. motto. Yeah. <laughs> In case of emergency, break gas. <laughs> um, so what was what was high school like? There were other Iranians, I'm sure. Did you feel like closer to them or did you feel like you got closer to the white community or was it just pretty integrated Toronto style? Um, it was pretty integrated. I think there were like groups of Iranian cliques, but they were like newer to Canada. Were there any like popular Mina Iranians like at the top like the cool? <laughs> Not in my grade. <laughs> I don't believe. This is a fantasy. I yeah have. this is a real. <laughs> no I'm sure they reboot. exist. Yeah. We Iranian? need another Mean Girls but all Iranian. <laughs> yeah no they're out there. <laughs> I'm sure they're out there. Yeah high school I I um I did a lot of like drama and improv comedy in high school so I hung out with mostly white people <laughs> yeah. we already knew that yeah <laughs> so everything was very much like the first 10 minutes of this podcast pretty much yeah you did improv in high school and then what did you study in college I went to um, an art school and I studied film production oh you've been in the game a long time I guess so but it was meaningless <laughs> I learned nothing <laughs> I learned nothing you I learned nothing or you remember nothing hmm. <laughs> are you gaslighting me <laughs> I, 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 I had some doubt and so I decided to gaslight everybody as is my want no I, I don't remember anything yeah I like to imagine that you like each day you have forgotten what has happened the day before, and it's just a brand new world. That I kind of love that. That isn't far off. <laughs> I think I'm going to start doing that. What? I want zero <laughs> recollection of it. Every day I get to reinvent myself, and it's, gra it's Groundhog Day. 50 first day. dates. 50 yeah. first dates. Yeah. No, Groundhog Day, you remember. Ooh, true. So you're like, oh, yeah. no, true. this again. 50 first dates, Yeah. it's the opposite, where it's something new every day, and it's and you don't have that memory right yeah i'll run it past my therapist <laughs> okay ask see what her, she thinks ask her where That's where we so need to funny. get the head injury to <laughs> oh my god <laughs> to make this happen can you remember the the mo the fall <laughs> <laughs> yeah when did i stop remembering things <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm sorry that this took a turn in this direction where we're like let's just exploit the trauma and but also That's make you feel like <laughs> <laughs> okay well <clears throat> so you did film production yeah. and how did you eventually find your way to comedy well I, I had been doing comedy since I was like right 15 although I'd, I'd proffer that when 15 year olds do do it <laughs> improv it's not, not comedy, comedy. 
I actually think that's when I was funniest. <laughs> so free, right? That's not so true. Free. You absolutely crushed in Sketchfest, Thank and you, you were awesome. So you were so, so funny. Fun. You guys are so funny too. Thank oh, you're the whole so show. funny. Everybody crushed. That's been our show. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. It's just thirty minutes of compliments, round robin. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> I used to never tell people I was a comedian. Like, I lived with this girl for three years once, and I was like, I think it's time I tell her I'm a comedian. Yeah. No, that is a secret one should keep to themselves. It was, like, such a shameful thing to admit (laughs) for some reason. No, that is, yeah. I was ashamed to say I was doing it for a long time because I didn't want to admit that I thought I was funny. That's so interesting that that's why you thought it was embarrassing. I feel like most people don't say it right away because they don't feel like they're qualified to yeah. actually say it. Like it took me a while because for a while I was like, oh, it's just kind of like a thing I do on the side. Mm-hmm. But now that I feel like it's my actual career, I feel yeah. more confident. That's good. Someone once told me they were like, wow, it's so bold of you to feel comfortable calling yourself an artist. <laughs> Holy shit. I felt really comfortable calling that person an asshole. Yeah. Oh my goodness. How do you respond to that? I was just like, I don't know, like shut up. Get get delusional. <laughs> like get on the train, buddy. Yeah. What's the what's the alternative? I think he was struggling to call himself an artist. I see. I yeah. See. Okay, so let's see. Let's do more trajectory stuff. We did college and then what happened after that? Like, did you get like a traditional career or did you go straight into pursuing your dreams? I just kind of floundered for so long. <laughs> I love I, a flounder. I made like terrible films that <laughs> nobody has ever seen. Um, I worked in coffee shops and um, restaurants. I did a master's in film production for no reason. I have a master's in fiction writing. Ah. So. You know, a fellow useless uh, <laughs> degree person. It was fun. Yeah, I, I loved it. Was it was kind of fun. Had a great time. <laughs> I also met my like eventual comedy stand up comedy mentor in oh. my program. So that was great. Well, then there you yeah. go. That was the reason. Yeah. That's awesome. Exactly. <laughs> I like to believe that not, no experience is wasted. I wish I believed that. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that about any moment in the past, except, and, but never about the present moment. Okay. <laughs> the present moment, I'm like, I'm failing at all times. Everything I do is wrong, and my life's over. But everything up until this moment has been in, <laughs> informing my current failure. No, uh, <laughs> has been informing, like, you know, the trajectory. I yeah. really do believe that there's no such thing as a wasted experience. I love There is that. wasted money, though. Mm. There is. <laughs> yeah. That's true. There is is wasted money i'm very good at that yeah <laughs> so you were doing lot. when did you like actually first step on stage as a stand-up comedian i tried doing stand-up in my early 20s but improv like ruined my brain so much that i was like i'll just make it up when i get there <laughs> and then That's... i would keep bombing yeah and then i would be like i don't like stand-up <laughs> I just read uh, Will Hines. He's like the improv king of Los Angeles. Very mm-hmm. talented um, improv comedian who's very rule based. He wrote, he writes these blog posts, these like really like these like theses about improv comedy. Wow. And he wrote one about the difference between stand up and improv. And he was saying that stand up is for writers and improv is for actors. Hmm. And I think he said the problem with stand ups doing. Um, improv is that they try to control too much Hmm. and like the scenario and the scene and that's why it doesn't work out and then improvisers have a hard time just like like having the like one-way dialogue Mm -hmm. basically I thought it was interesting yeah Yeah. I have a hard time with improv because I'm not a very good actor yeah oh Hmm. I don't I don't believe that. Oh, truly. <laughs> Every time I get notes, they're like, why don't you do characters? And I'm like, because I won't. <laughs> because I won't. That's so um, feminist of you. <laughs> Thank she you. is good at monologues, though, as we, we established. You can do a good monologue. Mm. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, when I took an improv thing, I, I I was too judgmental. I think that was like the lawyer part as well, not just mm. the writer. I was just like, why would you say that? Or like, why did you make that choice when... Clearly, this was right on the table. And um, basically, I found out that, like, 
I can't treat other people the way I treat myself. Um, I can't like shame them and judge their choices. And would you say those things in the scene? No, no, I would think them. Oh no, I would never say it aloud. Why I would, would just. I, that would be very funny. I would just be watching something and be like, "That that was an interesting choice." Yeah. Uh, Christy and pulls a script out of her pocket. Uh-huh. She's like, "I wrote this." Yes. Let's try this. So now, do you do both, or are you only? I do both. I'm part of like an improv troupe in Toronto and we do like a show once a month. Do your parents understand what you're doing? Like stand up and you know? (laughs) Not even a little bit. How do they feel about it? They're so supportive. They are unlike any other immigrant parents I've ever heard of. I remember I was like thinking of not doing comedy anymore. I was thinking of becoming a coder. And they're both like, no. Oh, we it's love amazing. that. Yeah. Part of this podcast is dispelling the myth of the um, disappointed immigrant parents. Yeah, they are not like that at all. Part of the podcast is also reinforcing. <laughs> yes, of course. Touche. Of course. We, we need the balance. <laughs> I have a f- really good friend that lives in Canada and she gets like artist grants for mm-hmm. her band and mm-hmm. has found that. Canada is like a, a better, easier place to be an artist. Do you have any comments on that? I've heard that. We do have a lot of grants. I've they're hard to get though. I've 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 gotten only a few for for film stuff. Um, but I have heard that you've gotten any is amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. People are always like, they're grants, they're grants, but literally grant writing is a full-time job. It's so hard. Like you can be hired to be a grant writer. Yeah, people do yeah. that. Yeah, it's really hard. You also, I feel like, especially like BIPOC creators, artists, it's always like, but what's your trauma? It's yeah. like we have right. to be like, this is how I'm different. <laughs> right. So and then your art me money. has to reflect that. Like you yeah. can't just do. Can't just make a show about a loser. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to sound like the, the diversity grant scholarship committee that's asking you to. Mm-hmm place your cultural identity on a platter but how do you connect if at all with the uh, Iranian part of you I really ran away from it for like most of my childhood and then um, my early 20s but around like 24 I started taking Farsi classes Mm. Uh, I started learning how to make the food yeah my family always celebrates the Noruz what do you think sparked the shift in wanting to connect with it again Um, I think not having like a sense of community really or being kind of jealous of my other friends who grew up with more of their family just seems like kind of like a built-in community that I was kind of missing. So (laughs) when are you cooking for us? I'm not good. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You you don't want it, but I, I mean... I'll try. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we have no shortage of Iranian food in yes. Los Angeles. It's also so hard. I'm, I'm sure you guys know the struggle of, like, my mom being, like, a little of this, a little of that. <laughs> right. There's, like, no measurements. No <laughs> recipe. No recipe. Yeah. It's hard. One time my grandmother gave me a recipe, and one of the ingredients was handful of oil. <laughs> she said, a handful of oil. And I was uh, like, whose hand? <laughs> yeah. Cleopatra was, she considered herself a living goddess. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have any kind of supernatural powers? (laughs) Or do you have a story where you felt like you transcended humanity? Holy (laughs) shit. Or any useless talents. (laughs) Yeah. I think what the most powerful I feel is when I'm on stage, which is so lame to say. Um... I'm on stage and I'm killing, like, everything I'm saying is getting a huge laugh. In improv, I feel this, especially sometimes, because you're just making it up on the spot, and it feels like it's coming from, I don't know, it just appear what to say appears in your head, and it gets a huge, it keeps getting huge laughs. That's when I feel, um, that's when I feel kind of the most powerful, I think. I've heard a lot of people say that when they have these sets where they're really crushing, they like leave their body and they're like watching <clears throat> themselves. And I have never had that. Is that something you guys relate to? I've never had something where I'm out of body, but I have had the feeling where I come off stage and I feel like high, like, like I've just done a drug. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, it's kind of scary. <laughs> 
<laughs> when the set is so fun. I have a really hard time sleeping after one of those like really yes, totally. impossibly good sets. I usually have a hard time sleeping after an impossibly bad set. And <laughs> I usually have a hard time sleeping. That's true. I think we've established you are a pretty insomniac. I, but. I miss insomnia. So the next question is Cleopatra had adopted a lot of Egyptian customs, even though she wasn't actually from Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any Iranian customs or things from maybe Italian culture that your parents have retained? Or mm -hmm. um, alternatively, is there something like super Canadian about you that you love and just lean fully into? Something that I do that's, I think, the whitest thing I do okay. <laughs> <laughs> is I like severely judge people on their handshakes oh yeah if someone gives me like a dead fish mm. i am done with them immediately <laughs> <laughs> you keep an actual dead fish in your pocket to yeah the oh, I should. Yeah. Comparison. that'd be terrible i would smell so bad but <laughs> but boy oh boy would you be prepared <laughs> yeah it's true a dead fish is i keep likes. it in a ziploc <laughs> yes like one second <laughs> Yeah, so I do that. And then when people have really firm handshakes, I'm like, I want to get to know them. Have you ever had, though, I, I have a pretty good handshake. I've gotten many compliments on it. and <laughs> You, that, you strike that, me as a firm handshake. That sounded very Trumpian. I have the best handshakes. <laughs> <laughs> but I... <laughs> I've had grown ass men like crush my hand to death. And I'm like, what do you think you is happening mm. right now? When they do that, I give it right back to them. I squeeze so hard. <laughs> but what's that? It's like an impromptu arm wrestle, it's but just power. with the hands. And you're like, it's what's a, going on? It's a power move that. <laughs> I, yeah. I Women of color right start aggressively Squeeze attacking hands. other yeah. hands <laughs> i do pay attention to how people there there's also the extend and then they turn their hand over and you're like what oh. <laughs> and that's also a power move and you're yeah. like and then that would throw me off i'm sad to report i might have the weakest handshake no. of all i'm a very floaty person okay <laughs> and uh yeah i'm i'm pretty sure it's a it's not a good it's not a good but we can, you can train me after this. <laughs> yeah, montage, training montage. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just give you stress balls to like yeah. strengthen your yeah. muscles. Oh, I have strong hands, just a weak personality. Oh. <laughs> you no. can overcompensate with disturbing eye contact. Oh. Just really good look you mm. in the eye. I think it's weird when people shake your hand but they're not looking at you. And oh. that is like a weird friggin' that thing that I've, <laughs> that's like an LA thing where it's like, you say hi, but then they're like, is anyone else better oh, no. <laughs> to talk to? Is there anyone else more important to I be addressing? That. Don't like that. Do they not do that in Toronto? I'm sure they do. I just don't, I'm the one looking away. <laughs> You're the one looking, that's hilarious. No, no, I'm not. I, I, I don't remember anyone. I don't like have a memory of anyone doing that. But as you know, I forget everything. Is the comedy scene full of egos there the way it is here? I guess. I feel like any group of artists are going to have their egos. That's true. There's always going to be egos. Yeah. And comedy is such like a vulnerable thing if you feel that it's not going well for you. It's such a muscle to just like get over the bombing and the humiliation uh, and the the worst yeah. though is when you are in one of those situations and you blame it on the room and the audience and then someone goes up and crushes and, and you're like, okay and, then and that's yeah. that was truly was me. me thanks to differ <laughs> thanks yeah. to that's differ that's so funny i i just would love to know more about why people bomb cuz i've seen people do a set and kill like destroy and then i'll see them the next day do the same set and they bomb and i'm just like what the hell like yeah, it makes no sense. There's no explanation there for really, it. Sometimes there isn't. Well, yeah. the explanation is that there's just too many variables. Mm -hmm. The time of day, mm -hmm. the order that you go up in. Yeah. How are you feeling that day? Who's in the audience? Who went up right before you? Did they do something awful? Yeah. Who's yeah. hosting? Right. What happened that day in the news? What the venue <laughs> is doing? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's so many variables, many and things. it's so hard. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a metaphor for just existing in life is there are going to be so many different things coming at you on any given day 
and your job is to navigate it as authentically and valiantly as possible and keep going Mm -hmm. and every day ideally you just get a little bit better Mm -hmm. because you were able to refine and pivot and recalibrate a tiny bit and navigate the uncertainty damn that's so beautiful (laughs) i hope i don't forget that (laughs) good thing we have a record of this so you'll be all the views on this (laughs) yeah (laughs) every time i bomb (laughs) and now it is time for a segment called dig deep this is where we ask our deep questions i will ask the first one Mm -hmm. um cleopatra was famously portrayed by elizabeth taylor in the 1963 film Mm -hmm. if somebody were to play you who would it be in the movie of your life and what is the arc of that story like (laughs) if it was a crossover between like two television shows or films what would it be i would say Pen 15. Oh, nice. A classic. Because I feel like my um, comedic voice ha- was developed from being a 15 year old loser. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it all started. Did you have like a big braces moment? I did. I actually, <laughs> I had braces twice. Me too. <laughs> actually, three times. Three times. While counting the recent Invisalign edition. Me as well. Yeah, I clocked them. <laughs> Yeah. Takes one to know one. Ooh. <laughs> what would my other show be? I don't know. What's a show about, like, failed filmmaker? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the comeback sounds like... The comeback! Yeah, just sort of this idea that you are kind of trying to have your second act, right? Isn't that what that comeback is about? Yeah, true. When I find the Middle Eastern actress who channels Lisa Kudrow, Mm -hmm. I can send her in to audition for your crossover. Thank you. What if I steal her from you? (laughs) I think she can have two roles. I don't know. (laughs) I feel like Vanessa Bayer could play 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 you. Yeah. Mm. (laughs) Cute. Just like. (laughs) I've never got that before, but I accept. So we have another far more serious question okay. that Lynn's going to ask you. Uh-oh. Okay, so Cleopatra, I always want to say Cleopatra. <laughs> Cleopatra was a um, historian. She was a political leader. She was a scholar. She was a beauty queen. Um, she had a lasting legacy of many things. What would you like your legacy to be? And also, what would you like your epitaph to read? <laughs> I've never thought about this. (laughs) I don't know. I guess I'd like to be remembered as a supportive person in the comedy community. Hmm. My tombstone. Mm -hmm. Guess I'm dead. (laughs) I don't know. Guess I'm dead. Guess I'm dead. (laughs) It is what it is. Here we are. Yeah. I have been saying it is what it is so much lately that I'm concerned for the state of my mind. It sounds like you're in a deep (laughs) depression. (laughs) I've been saying it it multiple times a day, and I don't think I've ever said it before. And suddenly Mm. it's coming up a lot. Mm. Are you saying it in a resigned way or are you saying it in a allowing way? Oh, Ah. let's let's go with allowing. But deep in all our hearts, we know it's a bitter resignation. resignation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it is. True, truer <laughs> statement. And yeah. Never been it said. is a yeah. proof. <laughs> That's, yeah. I've also jokingly brought up compassionate euthanasia far too much in the last. Uh, <laughs> in the last month just in oh casual conversation like you want it yeah just like <laughs> like casually being like i would like to choose a death date uh I, <laughs> yeah i i don't disagree with you yeah, yeah and just not? what would it look like if we could but in a socially acceptable not like oh i'm worried about you and we need a 5150 you mm-hmm. just more about like I absolutely agree it's more compassionate. I don't think that's, like, funny or kooky yeah, at all. Yeah, just, like, you know, the way that people have do not resuscitates and stuff and, uh, you know. So uh, on your side of the spectrum, you haven't thought about what you want your legacy to be until this very moment. I guess. <laughs> to be yeah. honest, I've never thought 
thought about it until this podcast because that was one of that was a Christie formulated question. <laughs> <laughs> I do think a lot about, I mean, and not in like a delusions of grandeur way, just as a way of keeping my perspective together of just realizing that very little will matter when we are gone. Mm -hmm. I think I feel less um, interested in being remembered as much as I feel engaged in living to the fullest. I mm -hmm. think I, I, I don't, when I'm gone, I'm gone. It is what it is. <sighs> but I feel like, um, like I know for me, like on my deathbed, the thing that's going to be most important to me is that I one traveled the world and two spent a, as much time as possible with the people I love. Yeah. And then they can forget about me the moment I die. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> You can haunt them. Oh, I love a good haunt. A little spook. Mm -hmm. I'm already so busy right now. I can't think about slating for the afterlife. <laughs> I'm My excited. schedule. I'm excited <laughs> like, for it. Yeah, what are you going to do in the afterlife? Busy, busy haunting. I'm going to go here and there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Every a, which way. I see a lot of corridors for your afterlife. Yeah. Play pranks on people. That would be nice. <laughs> finally have the levity in in the afterlife that I could not have in <laughs> while I was alive. Were you guys raised to think of potential like as this like capital P potential suspicions that I'm capable of doing really great mm. things but my biggest fear is just like I'll never end up reaching it or I'll never end up doing something mm -hmm. when I could have if I I don't know. Is I feel that a lot of pressure, yeah. I go through a constant battle of like can I just have a nice, easy life where I garden my sunflowers mm -hmm. and I don't care about recognition or achievement and I just have a job that helps me get by? Or do I want to keep achieving, 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 achieving? Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a constant battle in my head. Yeah. And then once you get an achievement, immediately you're like, well, what's the next one? <laughs> I don't right. think it I don't think if you live that way that you'll ever be satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. I also do think though there is this other concept of potential that has nothing to do with achievement. Mm -hmm. And it just has to do more with self-actualization and growth and I was listening to some other podcast and they were talking about whether you think You listen to other podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I was thinking of you the whole time. Um, good. But <laughs> Uh, they were talking about potential as is it something you're born with like oh here's where you could go given your sets and your circumstances versus potential is something you are constantly creating and recreating mm. as you go mm -hmm. a sort of expansion I don't know I have a friend who I told him that every single day I wake up and I go tick 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 and I'm just like trying to maximize my time as much as possible and I like constantly feel like I'm in a rush and there's not enough time and that's like I'm sure you both similarly yeah. uh -huh. live your life this way and my friend was like I used to be like that and now I don't care about anything wow. and it was the most wonderfully zen thing I've ever heard are they on medication you know <laughs> I will ask I think uh, like a fun cocktail of alcohol and weed and um, I don't know yeah. good television I guess <laughs> we have one last question um, the ancient Egyptians were famous for taking their belongings into the graves mm -hmm. for the afterlife. If you could pick something to take into your sarcophagus, what would it be? Um, I think that I would want to take my journals. <gasps> Ooh. Because I don't want anyone to read them. <laughs> because um, it's like a manifesto. <laughs> it's like a sad manifesto. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I that's that's like also another fear I have after I die. I'm like, they're going to read my journals. <laughs> I think about that all the time, too, actually. Yeah. Like, I am I have so many journals and joke books that I'm like, oof. Need those burned immediately. And people will read those oh, at yeah. your memorial thinking oh. it's <laughs> oh, nice. No. I have seen this where they like pull out someone's journal oh, and they're God. like, here's a beautiful entry. And it's like, uh, they did not okay to this. this yeah. That's so uncomfortable. Mine, I don't feel like there's anything in there that you could read at a funeral. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like, what's the deal with... <laughs> 
I Peter think I'm famously a- said. Yeah. <laughs> I just <laughs> I just stole Jerry Seinfeld's <laughs> jokes. <laughs> so bad. That's really funny. I should do that. <laughs> Bita, mm-hmm. we cannot thank you enough for joining us Thanks here in this podcast. Um, is there anything you'd like to promote? Where can people find you? I am online. I'm on Twitter. They can find me there. It's my name, Pizza Jiraki. And I'm also on Instagram. And that's Bita Bita Bita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We will link to your social media in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I've been Christy Bana. I'm Lynn Molly. I'm Bita Jiraki. See you next time. Bye. Bye.